Hey Steve. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's not bad. Where are we today? We're at Sage Industrial in Fresno, California. cool business. These guys came into my crosshairs a few years ago with clients looking for mold and mildew control, something ancillary they could add to their environmental control system. I thought it was pretty cool and it applies to greenhouses and indoor. Let's check out what they got. Hey, Brian. How you doing, sir? Hey, doing well. Steven. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Well, it smells clean in here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're running our system, so oh, that's great. All safe. Yeah, yeah, you run it in this room itself. Yeah, we run the whole facility. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, why, why not? Yeah, why not? That's right. <laughs> why not? We protect ourselves. So, well, give us a quick rundown. Well, uh, basically, Eros makes a purifier, an advanced purifier system that uses reactive oxygen to purify the air and surfaces. So that's our claim to fame, right? We have the ability to actually touch the, these surfaces, the doorknobs, everything that the air touches is protected by our equipment. So all the little nooks and crannies nooks, are crannies, being touched. crannies, under tables, drains, especially, you know, things like that, that right. are like food. We've started in food, so we've started with food processors, we've done live plants, nuts, meat, you know, meat, fresh fish, yeah. you know, all that type of well, stuff. Well, you're in yeah. the Central Valley here, yeah. it makes sense. All yeah. the produce around. Almonds, right. How old's the business? Uh, we've been uh, about 10 years in business. Just, oh, good for you. Yeah, we started in 2011. So. Good for you. Yeah. And this building's really nice. How long have you been here? We moved here about a year ago. Okay. So we started in the back of my house. Yeah. <laughs> hey, moved all awesome. the way to here. Some of the know? best, some of the hey, best yeah. companies in the whole start, entire world. Started in the garage. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. So what initially got you into the cannabis thing? Did a customer approach you? Yeah, we, we been in uh, greenhouses like we had a customer that grew orchids mm -hmm. and when he was growing the orchids he had great success all of a sudden he says hey I want to grow a cash crop yeah uh, what does this do for cannabis and I said I don't know um, it kills mold it kills bacteria <laughs> it kills odor uh, and he said well let's try it out so that's how we uh, originally launched into it. it was one of our customers flipped oh interesting from, uh, growing uh, yeah orchids basically right and yeah. just a little bit I know about orchids, yeah. lower light, higher humidity. Yes. So I'm sure that transition mold, to cannabis was tough. mold control, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, cannabis was tough for us at first. Yeah, they're more sensitive to any type of a sanitizer that's in the environment. Obviously, uh, the light controls, humidity controls, things like that. Um, so we've actually, since about 17 is when we got into it. We started okay. in, in, at the end of 2017. And we've actually developed our control systems more and more because of cannabis yeah. to have better control systems. So you have your own separate control for your own device. Mm -hmm. Is it compatible with other industry controllers? Yeah, like it'll tie into like greenhouse controls and things yeah. like that. So we have a couple ways of integrating with their systems uh, so that you can monitor, hey, I'm monitoring relative humidity, I'm right. monitoring my CO2, I can see the ROS levels as well. How many models do you have? Uh, there's about 18 configurations. Oh, wow. They all fit primarily in four classes of models. So we start with small models that are, we call the 40XX series. So it's a small mod model that'll do uh, anywhere from, depends on the application. So we have to size based on the application. But in cannabis, uh, we can do up to 10,000 cubic feet mm -hmm. potentially with one of these. And we talk cubic because we're treating all of the, the volume, air. right? Yeah, the volume of there. So I guess what I'm thinking about is a few different things. Are there times in the growth cycle that are unsafe for the product? No. So you can tackle it even ancillary areas, yeah, drying, trimming. We've, I mean, we have people treat hallways. Even. Yeah. I mean, really, right. because offices. of cross contamination, offices now is a big thing for us with killing coronavirus. Right. We do. We call it an indiscriminate killer. Like I've had blueberry farmers go, well, what does it do on blueberries? It kills mold. What does it do on pomegranates? It kills mold. Yeah. What does it do on cannabis? It kills mold. It kills the odors, the VOCs in the air. It does indiscriminate killer for that. So it's even tackling odor. Yeah, VOCs is a big thing. That's one of the, the, the orchid farmer I was talking about. Mm -hmm. he, he went and outfitted a, one of his multiple greenhouses with the unit for the cannabis that he's, because I'm going to grow cannabis. Right. The next day, his parents owned the facility. They came in and they're like, um, what happened? Did you lose the crop? And he goes, why? He goes, well, they can't smell it. Huh. They're used to driving up and smelling the cannabis and it was gone. 
So we had people do that. The very first people that tested in dry rooms were like, oh my gosh, you killed everything. Right. And they turn off the system and all of a sudden, start the smelling smell again. comes back. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm killing the VOCs in the air, not what creates the VOCs. I could imagine that being a, a significant amount of pushback for early adopters mm -hmm. is, does this zap the Terps? Mm -hmm. Terps, uh, flavor profiles, uh, the, uh, you know, all of the potency testing. And so we've had a, lo a lot of our first adopters, we didn't realize how big they were. Mm -hmm. There's some large customers yeah. and they did all that testing and they're like, yeah, yeah, you're not affecting my Terps. You're not affecting this. I'm growing strains that used to not be, they're not very healthy strain. They're hard to grow. And I'm, I'm getting full crops out of them mm -hmm. and we're passing state labs. Right. Uh, so it's, it, it was one of the things that we didn't really know in the very beginning is what are we going to do to the, the terpenes and, and things like that. So, uh, luckily we have a lot of good customers. Now, yeah, no, definitely. And they've given us a lot of data about that. That is not an issue. And it's a fresh product. I mean, it, the, the yeah. consumer is demanding it get tested, let alone the regulations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it easier for you to implement this early in the, uh, the design process or is it more of a retrofit solution? Both, really. I mean, for us, the, the, you know, we, we can add it at any time in the process. Yeah. Obviously, if you already have a huge PM outbreak and I put it in there, now the PM might die, mm -hmm. but it's still on the plant. Right, I can't abate mold. Right. I can kill it, but it's not going to remove it. Right, you're keeping it at bay. Whatever. Yeah, I'm always stopping it. So it's better the earlier in the process you get it in right. a growth cycle. Doesn't matter if it's an old building or new building. That hmm. that's not a problem. We are uh, even this large unit, which we'll do in cannabis. This will probably roughly do about forty-five thousand cubic feet. A lot of times they're using greenhouses, yeah. multiple of these. This only draws three amps. Oh, really? So it's not like oh, now I have to put in an extra electrical circuit in order to handle this. Right. Um, it draws. I mean, three amps. The triple stack. This guy will do three times as much as that one. And it's still under eight amps, like uh, right about eight amps. Wow, that's very impressive. Very low power. And yeah. is it voltages? What voltage do you offer? Yeah, it's this comes in single phase, 120, and we have a world power, so we have a 230, 240 volt okay. single phase. Okay. So it's not 240 for the U.S. It, they all run on 120 single phase. Okay. So we have to invert um, for world power, but um, yeah, so all of them, depending on the, the size, take less amount of amperage. So we start with like the small I talked about, yep. our XX series. We go to a YY series, which is the next step up. ZZ is a little longer, looks exactly like this. We can show you in production what a ZZ looks like. Then it goes to the 4120. And then we do even make 4240s, which are our NEMA 4 um, and even NEMA 4X versions. So I have these on stainless steel with an air conditioner and heater on the side of it on top of a roof in the snow in Dakota City oh my gosh. year round. Wow. And so we make those for specialty um, applications for outdoor use, things mm -hmm. like that. How about like, um, I'm, ass I'm assuming a lot of it has to do with contact time across the unit itself. When you have a constant ventilation in a greenhouse, mm -hmm. do you find you need to deploy so more That's of these? where we're very different. So a lot of our customers are like, ask us, hey, what's your CFM? This guy's only running 150 CFM or less. Oh, wow. One of these guys is like 28 CFM. I don't have- Hardly to, anything. I don't have to turn the air in order to treat it because I have a sanitizer. So the way it's working is it's taking the ambient air in, humidity, right? whatever's in the air, taking that in, applying a high voltage, high frequency pulse, creating reactive oxygen. The reactive oxygen that's inside is very short lived. So it doesn't, it doesn't even make it out of the unit. So anything that comes into contact with that is it being kills killed, it. negated, yeah. Spores, everything, destroyed. DNA, RNA level, destruction. Anything um, that is, that, uh, is in the uh, environment itself that I doesn't go through here. So what happens when a plant gets PM? Spore relates, the spore now moves to plant two. Mm -hmm. If that spore doesn't go through a purifier, it doesn't get killed. But with our system, because we have the sanitizer in the environment, I kill plant to plant. Across yeah, you're killing it. So that is our claim of fame. So I don't have to turn it all here. I don't have to have dwell time in here because I have a even level sanitizer in the room at all times. Right, wow. So it protects here, irregardless of whether I've actually filtered the air or not. Mm -hmm. In some cases, like in um, a lot of makeup air units, like for schools or for meat processors, the air is being pushed out, it never recirculates. Yeah. And I still have 90% reduction, real world testing. Wow. So it's a dramatic thing because of the output of our unit. Is it common to put this uh, in an application that would clean the air duct or ultimately maintain your HVAC? You can. I mean, it's a two for It's thing. a byproduct. It's a thing. byproduct. Yeah. Right. So if I run this and tap it like we did in our, in our room here, you know, in the offices here, we're tapped into the duct. The duct diffuses all the clean air everywhere. Right. So in essence, am I cleaning the duct? Yes. 
And am I also cleaning the spaces? Yes. Right. As well as any of the air that goes through. Okay. So it's it, a multi-step process. So the only real consumables, I see like a filter here and a filter here. Yeah, you really, uh, really there's three consumables. The filter, really difficult to change, you know, come, yeah. comes out and it goes took, back in. Really two, difficult, sorry. Two I'll, seconds. I'll slow down for you. Um, the chamber <laughs> inside, which we'll show chambers later, but there's a chamber inside where the reaction takes place. Mm -hmm. What happens is all the broken microbes, the destroyed microbes, they're not even really alive anymore. They're destroyed cells collect as a film mm. on the chamber. And eventually the electrical field does not create. And so you're not getting ROS production long term. But the way you know that is through the sensor. The sensor is always detecting the saturated level in the room to keep it at safe levels, to keep, hey, I need to up the production yeah. because the door open. I need to slow down because the door closed. It's blackout curtains at night in a greenhouse. Hey, the volume of space just got shorter. So when this thing tells you yeah. all of a sudden I have a higher well, count than normal, mm -hmm. this thing isn't capturing it as well. Right. It'll so you replace shut it. it off. Yeah. So as soon as Simple. you're not getting basic levels in the room, then you know that it's time to either change the filter because right. it's not getting airflow, change both the filter in the chamber or potentially even the sensor as well. Right. So, so those are the only three consumables. So I'm an indoor grower. I mm -hmm. want to apply this. Mm -hmm. Does this controller have a uh, is it lit up, the back display? It, that is lit up. So this one most likely wouldn't go into a cannabis, whereas... Could go in the hallway outside the, the room. A lot of hallways we do that. Now, the yeah. other thing we do, we do offer where the purifier is in the room. This is in the hallway. So you can have every room, all yeah. the controllers outside. You can see them. They can be locked. Nobody can touch it, but you can read them. But the sensor is inside. So it becomes a three-piece Oh wow! versus something like this is an all-in-one, right? right? Controller, right. sensor, everything. This one's even portable with feet. You know, this is an <laughs> all-in-one. Whereas um, if you do some, a controller like this or this, the cannabis controller tends to be this one because it's solid. So you, don't have, you have a blackout yeah. basically capability and then they open it up to get the readings. I see. Inside. That makes sense. So that's the only difference. So this is, and this came because cannabis Custom. customers are like, Feedback. what do we do about light deprivation? Right. Like, good question. Let's get them with solid. Yeah. Uh, and then all the lights on the large units now we're offered in full green. You're doing green. Because Smart. our, our uh, agriculture is white, blue, and uh, the green. <laughs> and they didn't want any blue light. So we have an all green cannabis option. All of them now have a switch capable, so you can open them up. I'm not sure if a switch is installed in this tester, but we'll check, nope. But all of these can come with a switch, uh -huh. and all of the lights on all the units go out in the room. So from the control, you can look and see if something's on or off, but all the lights are off. Wow. So you can remotely turn those lights off. I like how quickly you adapted. We have to. Yeah. I mean, really, ultimately, we're providing a solution to a problem. I want to pass state testing. I have odor control right. you know, issues. I have, obviously, mold issues and loss issues. So we're trying to provide a solution. So when you said, hey, what model is it? Well, about 18. Do you want a solid? Do you want it with a switch? Do you need it with a sensor? Do you need it for through and through? It's going into a duct. Or, no, I'm, I'm mounting it above, just want to mount it and pipe it above fans. We even will provide an inflatable sock with holes in it that you literally comes in this, yep. catch it here, and it inflates out, and now I'm diffusing evenly throughout your room right. without you having to run a bunch of hard pipe. So, well, man, this is awesome. Right. Why don't you, you uh, want to take yeah. a walk through? Show me inside, yep. please. Yeah, yeah come thanks. on this way. This is behind the curtain, as All we right. call it. So these are the people that make it happen. What's going on, guys? The best team in the world, right here. Wow. So depending on um, what we do production in lines, so depending on what we're doing, we'll have a set of controllers going that may be like we talked about the solid lids, cannabis. Mm -hmm. We may have a whole set of them going for environmental. Um, various XX models, YY models constantly moving through the process. So they'll go from parts to a pre-build, whereas we don't know what the model's gonna be yet, right. to then finally having it configured. Like I mentioned, there's about five, six models that are available for this let alone some of the configurations that can happen on top of that. And so we'll get it to a point so that the turnaround of the customer is faster. Come back so and do the pre stuff. Spot, like go, hey, look at yeah. this process. And then you can get as close as you want, but be aware it's high voltage. So at some, there'll be a distance where it'll be a problem for your camera. So, so there's no, that, that's it, right? That, that's, what? That was the competitors. That hey. was their big issue. Yeah. I mean, we have people coming to. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs>